Today's video topic is about self-reliance and how it is just so dangerous. Being the first child of a single immigrant parent <laughs> is something that will make you self-reliant really quickly. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because I grew up having responsibilities. I had another human to take care of, which was my little brother, you know, growing up I had to watch him and, you know, feed him <laughs> and just basically take care of this little kid. But I, I look back now and I, I do appreciate and I have learned so much from doing that. But at the same time, on the other spectrum, it made me realize that I was very, very, very independent and also very, very fearful. And let me explain. So I became very, very independent where as soon as I could, I wanted to work, you know, to help out my mom, of course, and to, to pay some bills. And then when I finally got a job, I paid all my bills for the most part. I never really asked for a lot. In terms of like my feelings, I kind of handled them on my own. If I was sad, I would perhaps call my friends or, you know, to kind of deal with it on my own. And then on the other side, I became very, very fearful because I had to handle a lot of important stuff, you know, like I'm sure immigrant immigrant children already know we had to interpret a lot of documents. <laughs> important documents, school documents, you know, that our parents didn't understand. And of course it's not their fault, but as a young child that's like 10, 12, 13, you know, and you're trying to interpret this like legal document that doesn't really make sense sometimes and trying to make the right decision. And it was hard because sometimes you don't know the right decision and yet you have to know. You have to just know what to do. And I became very, very much fearful of making the wrong decision. And I think, and I related back to my childhood because I think that's where it really started. Because, you know, obviously our childhood is kind of like the foundation of who we become later on in life because, you know, we learn from those experiences and we learn not to do some stuff and to repeat good behavior if we are not reprimanded for such behavior. But really with me learning how to do things on my own, I recognized that I was being really, really self-reliant and extremely independent. And to the point where now that I look back, I realize it was self-idolatry. It really was a concern for only me, forget everybody else, only me. And I had to obviously think about my brother or my mom, you know, when it came down to it. But at the end of the day, I was the most important and I needed to figure out what was best for me. And I never really thought of other people. I mean, I did, but I always was very much focused on myself. And I know that most of us can say that because obviously we're just trying to survive in this world. But I think it says in the word that we should consider others greater than ourselves and like love your neighbor as yourself is one of the verses that are in the bible because we are so already focused on ourselves <laughs> we're already so it's so much into self-idolatry you know that we don't recognize that other people are going through the same struggles and i think because of that self-idolatry and that fear of wanting to make that right decision or wanting always that best decision and, and that fear kind of turned into this control. I wanted to control different aspects of my life as much as I can, as much as I could, excuse me. And I think that's why now looking back, I went into the new age. If you guys don't know, I'm, I got out of the new age and I have my testimony up here um, for you guys to watch why I got out of the new age. Glory to God. So yeah, with the new age, um, I was just practicing a bunch of things that made me idolize myself even more, made me focus on me even more than I already was. And it just gave me this outlet to be even more wicked, even awful. And I know for some of you, maybe you've heard, you know, the saying before where you're like, oh yeah, love yourself more. Here's the thing, I think sometimes we don't recognize that we already love ourselves 
or maybe the opposite of the same coin is that we hate ourselves but truly if you hate yourself you're always consistently thinking about you anyways regardless if you love or you hate yourself and i was i was on the other side of the spectrum where i hated myself like i was definitely I looked down on myself too. I became a perfectionist as well. Let's just air out all of the dirty laundry while we're at it. Definitely was a perfectionist to some degree. And if I didn't meet my standard, for the most part, I would very much dislike myself. And I dislike myself for other reasons, but I'll just leave it at that that I was on the other side of the coin where I hated myself. But of course, I was literally the only person that I thought about all the time and even in you know my relationships i recognize now and looking back that i was only i was out for my own best i was out for my own best interest does that make sense i although yes i cared about that person and i love that person which is brian by the way if you don't know he's my husband although i looked at that person i love that person i never thought about their feelings i always thought about how they made me feel if that makes sense. When I came to God, the minute that I came to God and I came home and I was, you know, I recognized that everything that I was doing in the new age was bad, was demonic. I recognized that I was my own idol and I had to get off the throne because I was on it and I did not belong there. And so I had to knock down my own idol and my own idol was me. <laughs> and God does not like idols. He is the only person that you should be idolizing, that you should be worshiping because he's the only true God. I was recently watching a video as well about this girl talking about this topic and especially how it, revert, it referenced her childhood as well. And I like the way that she worded it. I'm kind of paraphrasing, but um, this is, you know, along the lines of what she said. When a child doesn't believe in a parent taking care of them, they shut them out and self-soothe and take care of issues beyond their own capabilities. And I totally agree. And if you really think about it, you wouldn't let a five-year-old come up to you and, and if they told you, hey, I'm going to cook tonight, dinner's on me, you would look at that five-year-old as if they were absolutely insane. <laughs> And because you're like, you can't cook on your own. I have to cook because you're gonna burn yourself. You don't know how to chop things properly. No, no, you're five, go sit down. I mean, maybe if you help them and they were alongside you, sure, you know, you could watch them carefully and make sure that they don't hurt themselves. They need a guide. And that's what I'm trying to get at is that God is our shepherd, is our guide and we need him in order for us to do those difficult things that we can't even do. I can't do anything on my own. Let me just lay that out. I can't do a thing on my own and I can't believe I ever thought that I could. <laughs> we even as adults are not supposed to take care of everything. God is our parent and we are meant to rely on him for everything. And when I was in the world, I was expected to be self-reliance and be really independent. I think we all are. And of course we all are to a certain extent expected to be doing things on our own. But really like us Christians, we know that we don't really do anything on our own. Like even the food that we eat, the house that we're in, God takes care of all of that because we're supposed to seek him first, and his righteousness first. And all of these other things will be added unto us. You know, we know where our provision comes from. It's from our provider and he's our father. And so if we're his children, he's the one providing for us. Point blank period. It, it, he's the one providing for us. He is a proper and true parent where he knows that his children need his care. And I want you to really focus on that for a minute that Sometimes we need to recognize that God is that one true parent that has it all and he said it himself that he will take care of you. When I finally realized that I wasn't alone because I re recognized that I don't have to do everything on my own, that's when I like lost it. I was like, whoa, because for the longest time I thought that I was alone on this earth having to do things on my own. 
and I had this wall up, you know, you know, those people or those dogs in the street that come, come off very, very ferocious. That's because they've just been hurt so many times that they have this wall of like, I'm going to be angry with you because I don't want you to hurt me. That's, I feel like how I felt. I was just very, I was so angry and also so sad and also fearful all at the same time, if that makes sense. But when God told me I don't have to do this alone, he really tore down the wall that I was, that I had built up for after so long. And I want to tell you guys that God is your guide and counselor. You don't have to do this on your own. He is the unwavering rock and steadfast love that you needed while growing up. I want to say like a few weeks ago, yeah, a few weeks ago, I was dealing with this same issue where I was afraid of making the wrong decision. And God actually spoke to me through my devotional, believe it or not. And Brian was with me while he did that, which is amazing. If you guys don't know, Brian is my husband and he is not a believer. Um, so please pray for him. Um, but I read this devotional out loud and me and him were just both stunned because right before I had read this, I was telling him, I was like, God is not, um, I was telling him, I'm so afraid of making the wrong decision and I'm so afraid of just doing bad stuff because um, I felt like I was kind of slipping back into doing, you know, sin. And then God spoke and he said this. It starts off with verse 32, verse 8. It says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Making decisions for our futures can be overwhelming, especially when directions seem hazy. We don't want to make the wrong decision that will hurt us. Sometimes we just want to tell someone to tell us what to do so we aren't weighed with the responsibility. It can be difficult to trust our own judgment and intuition. Thankfully, God is our faithful counselor and we can go to him with every decision we are, we are wrestling with. He will give us wisdom when we ask for it and gently lead us in the best direction. He loves us so much that we can trust him to protect us from harmful choices. We don't have to face the unknown alone. God wants us to ask him for help. He even expects us to. And if you want to pray, I'm going to read the prayer right here. It says, God, I don't want to make decisions alone. Give me wisdom and point me in the direction you want me to go. My trust in you gives me confidence to face the future. When I read that, I was, number one, stunned. And I praise God that he spoke to me directly just like that. I can't believe I saw this devotion on the right day at the right time. God is so good. And this brings me to my next point where you need to humble yourself. Humble yourself by surrendering those things that you're trying to handle on your own. And God doesn't humble us. I mean, you can pray for him to humble you, but I just heard a sermon um, from Derek Prince, I think, where, he's, where he said, don't ask God to humble you because then you'll end up in a situation, like a humiliating situation, and God's, you're gonna be like, God, how did I get into this? And God's gonna be like, well, you prayed for it. <laughs> but humble yourself by surrendering those things that you're struggling with, those decisions that you need to make. For example, those feelings that you're hiding, you're suppressing, that school or work project that you're stressing about, a relationship struggle that you're going through, whether it's friends, family, your wife, husband, or boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it may be, because God sees your heart and he sees that you're struggling and he's your guide and your counselor. He wants to help you. He's your father and he wants to take care of you. Imagine a parent that wants to take care of every need of their child. And I recommend that you guys meditate on this verse, Psalm 32 verse eight. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. He has his loving eye on you. And I want you to meditate on that today and really, really focus on the fact that God gives us this, his precious word and speaks to us and lets us know that we are not alone. He will never leave us nor forsake us. We are not alone on this earth. We don't have to make these overwhelming decisions on our own. And we have a parent that wants to truly take care of us. The last thing that I wrote is give it to your shepherd 
whatever you're struggling with because he makes you lie down in green pastures. And if you guys don't know where that's from, that's from Psalm 23. And Psalm 23 really talks about how God takes care of us. He makes us lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside still waters. He restores our soul. God takes care of you and he wants to take care of you. So get off this video, go pray to him, go pour out your heart to him because he cares about the details of your life. He cares about what you're going through. He wants to take care of you and learn how to be a child again. Learn and ask God, hey Lord, help me to be a child again. And I think that's a prayer that I definitely want to start praying as well as to learn how to be a child again. Because some of us grew up really fast and we are really independent, but we need to learn how to be completely dependent on Him, on God. And through His Word, through Jesus, we will abide in the vine and produce many, many more good fruits. But the first step is humbling ourselves because we got to step off th that throne. We don't belong there. <laughs> I hope that this video blessed you and I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what your comments are down below and I hope to see you guys in my next one. God bless. Bye.